Despite the ongoing anti-aging effort, it is estimated that a wide-ranging system of controlling biological aging is at least 20 years away. So the idea would be to live for at least another 20 years in relatively good health and wait to see what treatments then become available. That said, regardless of your age, you can start your personal longevity strategy today. Let's look at things that you can do today that may be able to extend your health span and your lifespan by at least 10 to 20 years. The diseases of aging do not arrive on a specific birthday, nor do they appear overnight. Many diseases start silently, and it is not always possible to feel these small changes occurring at the cellular level. You can use diagnostic tests to gather valuable data on your health. Whichever type of test you decide to take, it's essential that you keep a record of the results. A genetic test can locate genetic predispositions to specific diseases. Many companies now offer all sorts of genetic testing, from individual diseases to a full DNA investigation. In most cases, you will only need to take this kind of test once. You can then use the information to improve your longevity decision-making process and to assist your medical advisors in the future. Detailed checkups test many biomarkers, such as your lipid profile, thyroid hormones, glucose, and liver and kidney function. They can also check inflammation biomarkers, such as C-reactive protein, as well as levels of certain vitamins and minerals that are vital for our health and well-being, such as vitamin D, vitamin B12, potassium, sodium, magnesium, iron, and zinc, just to name a few. Biomarker composition normally changes with age, so older people may benefit from checking more markers more often than younger people. Regular checkups specific to any disease or condition you may have will show how well your interventions are working. If you are taking drugs or supplements for age-related diseases, it's good to regularly check to see if they are working or if there is a need for replacement or for dose adjustment. A visit to a health practitioner remains one of the most reliable ways to get a proper assessment of your physical condition. Properly interpreting the data is vital for developing a good strategy, and a doctor may be able to advise you on how to combine your treatments in a safe way, especially if you need to address several issues at once. Some drugs may be incompatible, or your genetic blueprint may predispose you to a weak response to certain treatments. A doctor can also prescribe additional tests or refer you to a specialist if the situation is unclear. Be sure to describe your issues and experiences in detail, and you can refer to your notes and records to make sure you don't miss anything. And try to remember what happened before, during, and after you felt that something wasn't quite right. And once you've done that, make sure that you record it. Be sure to list the medications and the supplements you are already taking and the reasons why. This will help exclude the influence of those medications on an accurate diagnosis. To work out your longevity strategy, you must be honest with yourself. Using the GROW model, you can tailor your strategy and plan your journey. You know what you like, you know what you don't like, and you know what you will do, and you know what you won't do. The G in GROW stands for goal. So having had at least a checkup, you will know what markers are either out of reference range or close to a limit. Decide which one you want to tackle first. It may, for example, be to reduce your body fat percentage. The R in GROW stands for reality. Where are you now? What is the reality of the current situation? I.e., what is your current body fat percentage? Let's say it's more than 40% and you want it to be less than 20%. The O stands for opportunities. Here you should list as many ways as possible of reducing your body fat percentage, even those that may seem impracticable at the present time. Just list them all. If need be, get help from friends and family or even a professional. The W stands for what and when. This is where you must be 100% honest with yourself. You know what you will and you know what you won't or cannot physically do. The W also stands for when. When will you try to do this by? Firstly, it must be realistic. For example, you're not going to lose 20% of your body fat in two weeks. 
It may be a distant goal, such as something in one year. But you can also insert sub milestone targets, for example, every three months to measure progress. And this can also help with your motivation. So what can you do right now to help you start your longevity journey? Well, using your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, you can find out how many calories your body burns at rest. Then only eat the extra calories that you know you can burn off with a normal daily routine and exercise. For example, if your BMR is 1,920 and you burn off 500 calories when you work and exercise, don't eat more than 2,420 calories in a day, but ideally be in a calorie deficit. For example, 2,300 calories per day or 16,100 calories per week. It's important that you do record this and a calorie counter app may also help you track your calorie intake. You can reduce the amount of processed foods that you consume by eating whole foods, meat and vegetables. Learn how to read the labels on food packaging. Try to walk more than 10,000 steps a day. Now this may be difficult to begin with, so start small, maybe 1,000, 2,000 or 5,000 steps a day and then build up gradually. If you have health issues, speak to a doctor and they will help you to adjust this number to your actual ability, but still walk as much as you can and as quickly as you can every day. Become breathless at least once a day for 10 minutes. Try taking the stairs and eventually try taking them two at a time. Sleep in a room that is cool and dark. If possible, track your sleep. Look to get at least seven hours of sleep a night and aim for 20% of that or more to be deep sleep. Again, a fitness tracker may help you to do this. Try to reduce unhealthy habits such as heavy drinking, smoking and non-prescription drugs. These are all known to accelerate aging. It has been shown in numerous studies that social interaction can benefit your health. So get out and meet people. Try to walk every day at the same time to get your step count up and pretty soon you'll start to bump into the same people doing the same thing. Centenarians are known to interact regularly within their social circle, which may be a factor that contributes to their longevity. Only supplement with what you need and cannot get from natural sources. For example, NMN may raise NAD, but so does exercise and fasting. But if you live in a sunlight deprived location, you may need a supplement with vitamin D. There are many longevity related supplements on the market. I can't tell you what to take, but once you've decided what you want to take, introduce them one at a time and start with a low dose. Then record your reaction to it. And once you are happy that your body can tolerate it, gradually increase the dose until you reach your target. Then repeat this with the second supplement and so on. There is a lot of misleading marketing and overpriced supplements with little or no supporting data to prove that they will do anything for your longevity. So due diligence is a must before deciding what to take and why you want to take it. Also only buy from reputable suppliers that can show provenance in the supplement field. There are many fly-by-night entrepreneurs and dropshippers that are cashing in on supplements such as NMN and resveratrol. Avoid multivitamins, especially those targeted at specific sexes or age groups. Everyone is different. There is no such thing as a one size fits all anti-aging supplement for the over 50s or for say ladies in middle age. Stay informed. Keep up to date by subscribing to medical websites and journals. Follow anti-aging themed social media channels. But like the 20 year old life coach, please look out for those who are only in it to make a quick buck. If you were to ask me how to start, and some people often do on the channel, I would say this. Firstly, throw out all of your processed foods, tins and packets. Anything with a supplement fax label on it is really not food. Try to buy fresh, whole food. Organic may be better. Cook at home as often as possible and eat out less. Stay away from fast food outlets and try not to order food in. You don't know what they're doing to the food that you're going to eat. Gradually reduce the quantity and the frequency of intake for nicotine, alcohol, and non-prescribed drugs. If you can, set aside 15 minutes a day 
to become breathless, even if it is only walking to begin with. Try taking the stairs as often as you can. Good quality sleep is vital. Try to improve your sleep. The environment that you sleep in should be cool and dark. Aim to sleep for at least seven hours a night and try to go to bed at a time that doesn't require the alarm to wake you up. If you can, take some tests, blood tests. Have as many markers checked as you can afford. Take an epigenetic age test and there are free tests online. Change your lifestyle and your diet to move the biomarkers into the reference range. Supplement with separate vitamins and minerals if the lifestyle and diet changes cannot make the difference that you need. Then investigate what longevity supplements you may wish to take. For example, NMN to boost NAD, trans resveratrol to initiate hormesis, senolytics such as fisetin and quercetin to kill off senolytic zombie cells, or apigenin to inhibit high levels of CD38 and also boost your NAD. Our unchangeable genetics dictate only 20% of our longevity. The other 80% is epigenetics, and that's diet, exercise, environment, sleep, etc. This is down to you. As David Sinclair says, 80% of our longevity is in our hands. What will you do today? Well, so here's the most important take home message is that only 20% of your longevity and how you'll feel when you're 70 and 80 and 90 is genetic. Okay. The rest is in your hand. That's liberating. I mean, you can sit on the couch, you can eat potato chips, you can mm. uh, not exercise, you can eat whatever you want, mm. but you're minimizing your, your potential. Right. And what we all have in our bodies, what we co-discovered in my lab, is that there are genes that control how long we live. We work on these pathways. Mm. And what we've discovered is they don't just exist, they respond to how we live. Mm. And what we want to do is trick our bodies into thinking there's adversity. Mm. Biological stress, not emotional stress, but biological stress. Okay. So now we understand why does exercise make us healthier and live longer? Why does being hungry make us live longer? Why do all these things, eating good foods, mm. it's because they're turning on these body defenses, these longevity genes that we work on. Mm. And that's the revelation. They're in all of us, but we, they become complacent unless we trick our bodies into getting this feeling of, of uh, adversity. Adversity. So it's, we call this hormesis. Okay. Hormesis is what doesn't kill you makes you live longer. 